It's been a year since the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S hit the market. Now let's find out if it's been worth it after a whole year. Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to my one year review of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Now if you join us for the very first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button notification icon to watch more videos like this. And I also want to give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, Seagate, because they make some awesome hard drives, which uh, I use for a lot of my PC builds. Now, the Xbox Series X and PS5 launched roughly around uh, uh, this time last year. And, you know, it was just, it was a big thing because we're getting new consoles, we're getting uh, some crazy, crazy amount of new performance, and we're getting, of course, new games. Now, consoles went on sale. I got myself a PlayStation 5. I got an Xbox Series X from Microsoft. Big shout out to them for that. And I have been using both consoles for a whole year. And I wanted to just kind of lay my thoughts on just what you have with both of them. Now, let's start off with the design look, that kind of thing. I think the Xbox Series X is the better looking console. Yes, it looks like a mini refrigerator or a tower or a router, but it's simple. It's slick, it's black, you can use a dbrand skin on there if you want to. And best of all, I can fit into any cabinet I choose in terms of just storing in your location. As opposed to the PlayStation 5, which has a very bolder look. Uh, I do like it too, uh, but it's just a much bigger console in terms of size. So it doesn't fit into traditional cabinets and you might have to upgrade to something that will fit your PlayStation 5. I mean, properly or just set it on the side like I do uh, just in my own case. Now, in terms of just uh, the customability, I do like the fact that you can replace the back plates of the PlayStation 5. I prefer that over putting skins because I'm just terrible at staking that. But design-wise for me, the Xbox Series X kind of takes the lead. Now, besides that though, you have two powerful consoles that, you know, one's 12 teraflops, Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5 is about 10.5. Roughly, I'm just throwing numbers out there, but it really doesn't matter. It's about performance and it's about games. And over the last year, we've seen a ton of games from both, both companies. Now, we've also seen a lot of third-party games, and that's what we've seen the most from both consoles with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. And that's something that I think is really important to have that conversation with, especially as a gamer, if you're looking for exclusives and looking for something that to drive you to either consoles. They haven't been a lot of exclusives yet, but they are coming. And we know that, of course, Microsoft has Halo Infinite dropping this holiday season for the Xbox Series X, while the PlayStation has had a few cool games, of course, uh, like Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales, uh, we've got Ratchet and Clank out there, uh, which again, fun games to play. Now, when you talk about games and you talk about, you know, uh, how to access those games, you can get the consoles either the disc versions or discless version, but honestly, you're gonna be downloading and installing the games onto the hard drives. Now, both of them come with sizable hard drives with a terabyte for the Xbox Series X and roughly around 800 gigabytes for the PlayStation, while the actual numbers are 999 gigabytes for the Xbox with about 669, 670 for the PlayStation 5. Now, that sound, might sound like a lot, but honestly, as you start playing games, it fills up quite quickly. With my Xbox, uh, I had to uninstall Cyberpunk just so I could install uh, Halo Infinite multiplayer. Uh, so these games are getting bigger and bigger and you definitely need more storage. Which brings us to our sponsor of this video, Seagate. Now Seagate makes some awesome drives that of course work for both your PlayStation 5 and the official drive uh, for the Xbox Series X. Now this is where it differs between both companies, uh, Microsoft and PlayStation. Uh, Microsoft has the storage expansion card, which is very simple and easy to use. Comes in two sizes currently, a terabyte and 512. You basically pick it up, you basically slide into the back of your console and boom, you're connected. You've got your upgrade right there. So that is pretty cool. And that is from Seagate. Now for the PlayStation 5, you can get your own uh, MVME hard drive, uh, something that is PCIe 4, and that is something that Seagate provides with the FireCuda 
530 with heatsink. I really love this drive because the heatsink is very important because you're going to need it since your PlayStation has an enclosure for uh, your storage and uh, it goes up to four terabytes. So I actually have the four terabyte version, which means I've got almost five terabytes of storage for my PlayStation 5, and that's absolutely awesome from Seagate. And that drive, by the way, has drive protection. So if there's any issues, it gets corrupted or damaged, you can send it back to Seagate and they'll get your data back for you, which is pretty cool. So definitely check them out. Use the links down below. And honestly, you're going to need those drives uh, for your gaming sessions. The more games you play, the longer you keep these consoles, you're definitely going to need it. So with that being said, there's something that's quite interesting with the storage models for both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. The Xbox Series X and the Series S are just easier. You just plug and play and you're good to do. While on the PlayStation 5, you do have to open up the console, you do have to install it, and then you go, have to go ahead and format the drive uh, before it, it fully recognizes it. Granted, that will give you more storage options, maybe a better bang for your buck in terms of you adding uh, a bigger drive, but that lends to what the Xbox Series X does well, the ease of use overall. Now, the other side, so of course, gaming is the controllers. Both of them have new controllers, or should I say new and an updated controller. The PlayStation 5 controller is brand new. It's different, it's better, it's the best thing I've seen from PlayStation. It's a very comfortable controller to use and hold. I do like the haptic feedback and just the, the sensory overload you get from the controller. And I wish more developers who use it and will showcase it in their games. We'll have to wait and see. But honestly, this is a solid controller. Now, the updates have been very good, improving the battery life on the controller, and I do like that as well. Now, the, the Xbox controller is a standard Xbox controller. It's a little bit updated, but you know, Microsoft said tried and true, this isn't broken, and it works pretty well. Compared to the PlayStation controller, it does feel a little dated and older, uh, but you can't go wrong with this controller. It feels a little bit smaller, but very comfortable in hands. Now, there are no uh, internally built batteries like the PlayStation controller, but uh, you can always swap it out with rechargeable batteries, and I think sometimes that kind of works, especially if you have a long gameplay session. So let's jump into the games. There are so many games in these consoles and there are many games you can pick from. For myself, I have Ghost of Tsushima, which is a PlayStation 4 game, God of War, I've got Street Fighter, I have Second Son, I have Spider-Man Miles Morales. I'm not a big Ratchet and Clank fan, so I never actually got that game, but there are games for you to play there. And the PlayStation experience is a game to game experience. The dashboard says I am focusing on one game and checking out another game and playing another game. And that's what PlayStation wants you to feel. You are a gamer and you are in that gaming experience. Microsoft is a little bit of a different approach. We know the Xbox uh, dashboard is different in terms of how it actually layers for each section, but it also is very game focused in a different way. And what I mean by that is Microsoft's big push for Xbox Game Pass. So since I've got my Xbox Series X, I have not bought a single game. I pay for Game Pass month to month, and that has allowed me to play games like Forza Horizon without actually um, you know, buying the game, and also uh, Halo Infinite, being able to play the multiplayer um, without actually play, buying the game as well. So that is a very different approach and Microsoft feels that, look, you know what? Um, have access to our full library of games, have access, access to select third parties who join our program and you get to enjoy the games you want to by simply just buying the Xbox Series X or even the Xbox Series S or, you know, on your mobile device. You guys have seen me use Game Pass that way. And I think it's a very different approach I like it, and maybe because, yes, I'm older, I don't game as much as I used to, but I can still jump into the games that I like to play. Now, there are no killer titles for any of these two consoles yet. There's nothing that is driving consumers other than brand recognition. And we know, yes, the PlayStation brand is strong. It is the highest selling console right now. And, I, and yes, it is worth that monkey, but there's nothing that can lead you that way or lead you the other. I think, for the most part, Microsoft has a really good product with the Xbox Series X, and I think Xbox Game Pass is their new um, driver, if you will, something that will get people down there uh, to buy the console. 
Now, it's gonna be hard for anyone to pick up any of these consoles right now, but there's certain things you definitely need if you're gonna be gaming on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. You definitely need a TV that supports 4K 120, which both consoles do, VRR, and that is the LG C1 OLED, which you've actually seen throughout this whole video and what I have been gaming on with this. Now, this is a fantastic looking TV. I mean, it supports everything plus G-Sync, and AMD FreeSync. So again, PC gamers will enjoy that as well, but you'll have those capabilities built in and it fully supports your consoles. Now, this uh, TV also has a really good sound system, but honestly, I would go with the soundbar, which I, I use the Sonos Beam 2. This supports Dolby Atmos, which of course we have Dolby Atmos on these consoles. We have Dolby Vision as well. So you've got that clean, clear surround sound from uh, the Sonos Beam. Uh, and Sonos speakers are fantastic. They really do a good job of just making the game sound good. But honestly, just take a listen for yourself. A white worker guy? Yeah. Turns out he's lost with a prowler. Oh, sorry. Wait. Prowler? Then thief who runs around in purple? All right, so that being said, there's been a lot I've talked about with both consoles and I think they are fabulous. Um, and I wouldn't say you should pick one or the other. I think whatever games you like to play or want to play on either of these consoles you can find. Uh, I think though, if you're looking to play more third-party games, uh, the Xbox Series X might be the console for you, specifically because of Xbox Game Pass, allowing you to play more of those games uh, the way you want to without actually buying any specific game and just playing month to month. Now, if you don't want to spend all that money for either the Xbox Series X or the um, PlayStation 5, then the Xbox Series S might be the console for you. I've said this before in a previous video that this is currently right now a better buy than the PlayStation 5. And I still stand by it. I think it's still a better buy than the Xbox Series X because it does a lot of what that console does um, in terms of VRR support. Uh, it doesn't do 4K 120, uh, but you do have 1080p 120 on the console and uh, you still have access to Xbox Game Pass, all those functionalities. But it's been a fun year with those consoles. If you can pick one up during this Black Friday period, honestly guys, hopefully good luck but i would say both consoles are definitely the future of gaming and there's a lot to see as we move on so hopefully next year as i do my second year with the uh playstation 5 and the xbox series x i'll leave my thoughts on what i guess this console should do till then don't forget to like share subscribe definitely check out our sponsor seagate use the links down below and always enjoy your entertainment